Sean Sewell with Engearment.com in the beautiful mountains of Colorado doing some gear reviews. In particular, we're working on the BioLite 1500 base station portable power system right here. So this is how we have it set up right now. We are running Starlink. You can see Starlink right there. Charging off, we have two of these 100 watt panels from a different company. And then I'll insert a video of us charging up our Dometic battery. Uh, so in this video, I will show you all the features, functions, and how we've been using the BioLite 1500. So let's get into it. So BioLite sent this over for us to test for two or three weeks, and we've taken it up here to the mountains of Colorado. Uh, the elevation is 10,500 where we are right now. Give you a quick little gander so you can see the beautiful areas we get to test stuff in. My gosh, that is gorgeous, right? So last night I got down into the 30s. We were using this no problem whatsoever. It didn't uh, stop working. Some battery power banks do stop working when it gets below, I'd say around 20 degrees Fahrenheit. Unless you take precautions to insulate them, I usually put them in a cooler, a soft-sided cooler, and extend that range just a little bit more. And often sometimes they will overheat. Uh, this one has built-in fan. The fan is the loudest fan I've ever heard on a power station. Uh, compared to, we're also testing uh, Goal Zero, a Jackery, a couple other ones right now. Um, and none of them turned on as loudly as the BioLite. So either this one's working really hard or it's really good at cooling itself off. But that is something to consider if you have kids and you're running um, a CPAP machine or something at nighttime and you don't want to wake up the kiddos. The fan is active and the fan is loud. However, the pluses on the BioLite 1500 is it's a little bit more compact size than some of the other ones we've tested, like I mentioned from those other brands. Easy to carry. There are these nice yellow ventilation slash handles, so it's easy to carry and move around. It's really nice and modular. I don't know why they don't make more of these like modular flat designs. The, the Goal Zero is kind of chunky. Um, the other ones we're testing have like weird handles on top, so it makes it kind of awkward to stack, but we still stack them because we'd like to make use of space. But um, let's start from the top, working our way down. On top, you're gonna get a really, really helpful wireless Q charger. Boom, charging, love it. Simultaneously, I am running AC power to our Starlink. This is the router right here, and the antenna, as you saw, was back there. Um, when I put the unit back where it came from, I'll have this plug going into our Dometic 55 liter cooler, and then this one will be going into our DJI uh, charger for our drum. Input for power right now, I have just one solar panel, but you can run more than one solar panel going in. Uh, <clears throat> one thing I noted, there is no round port there's no round port on the base. So you'll need to make sure you have your proper adapter with you to get power into here. Um, it's not gonna fit into the DC right there. So you need to make sure you have this with you. Fortunately, I always have a bunch of different adapters for different power stations to test out. And then um, I had to get a converter to go into here, at eight to 7.9. And then here we go, it's pulling in Oh, just about 29 watts right now, which is not bad for 8 a.m. <laughs> and I don't have it properly set up. It's just laying on the ground right there. So I want to show you how it works. So power comes in via uh, DC through solar panels or AC through the same port, which is pretty interesting. I've not seen that before. So the power adapter you can use at home will use that same setup. It goes in there, boom, and it charges up. You don't plug into the AC, you plug into here, and that's how you charge it up. A third way you can charge it is through USB-C power delivery, 100 watt right here. So if you have some other device that provides power, you could put it into here or you can power out. So oftentimes I will power out, uh, you know, going to my laptop, which needs, I think, around 60 watts to charge. So this is me my fastest way to charge my laptop. I'm not going to use the brick adapter. I'm going to use this guy right here. Then you get two USB-A, uh, 5 volt, 3 amps. You can charge your lower power consumption things, headlamps, flashlights, so forth. And then two USB-Cs right here. Great for charging up your action cameras, 360 cameras, stuff like that. What's cool about the display is you can see all kinds of fun stuff. Like it's telling me that we used 1200 watts since we plugged it in last night. Currently it is using uh, 48 watts, 50 watts for the um, 
satellite. And then the Dometic will go from 40 to about 60. So on average, let's call it 100, 120 watts per hour. I still have 15 hours to go. I imagine that will decrease the single digits once I plug in the fridge again. So in a typical case for how I would use it, it's gonna last me less than a day. Uh, that means I'm running the Dometic pretty sizable cooler, 55 cooler, as well as the Starlink. Um, you probably wouldn't run Starlink overnight like I did. Um, however, I upload a lot of files and Starlink is notoriously slow for upload. Download is pretty good, but upload, it's really not that good. So I, for my job, have to run the power to Starlink at, you know, 50 to 70 watts per hour to make sure those fi files go up and go to YouTube and so forth. So, and my purposes of using for the cooler, for the, uh, the Starlink, and then charging my, my laptop and two out of three um, DJI Pro drone batteries. Um, I'm looking at, um, you know, about 16, 17 hours of use nonstop. And in that time, like I mentioned, the fans did turn on quite a bit and quite loudly. You know, uh, we were sitting in the truck, my dog Chloe and I, going through notes from our podcast we had with uh, Stephen Sasha from Zero Shoes and Chris McDougall from Born to Run. And I'm editing the video and stuff. And the first time I kicked on, my, did I leave something on? Did I leave in a, uh, uh, some gear we're testing on? And I looked back at the trunk and it was, it was the fans on this guy. So it's definitely noticeable. Um, maybe if you have a van or RV or something, you can place it farther away. I wouldn't place it outside. would not want to get this thing wet more than we have. Um, but it's, it is durable. It stacks nicely. It, uh, it's very attractive and it's very compact and also uses a different kind of battery technology than the other, uh, portal power stations we are using. I will, uh, put in the written review those benefits of this style battery. Um, I'm sure there's many, many benefits. I just don't know what they are off the top of my head right now. I just know how to use this thing, where I've used it, um, and how I would present it to you to use. So say a different case. Say you're not using a Starlink or you're not using uh, a cooler. I bet you could get a whole weekend out of using other things. Uh, charging batteries, charging cameras, charging laptops, charging iPads for the kids. Maybe even running a CPAP one or two nights. So you can go online and find out how many watt hours your devices use and then look at this and you can see how much time you would get out of this device. The other factor is power in. You can power in while powering out. So like right now, we're powering out 57 watts and getting in a meager 13 because it is partially cloudy and also, like I said, 8 a.m. So you could, in theory, get up to 400 watts into this. So that, if you can get a few hours of 400 watts into this during the daytime, you would have no problem using this potentially in, indefinitely. Meaning, if you have the solar power coming in and or another way of powering, say you are uh, on a road trip and you have the AC brick with you and you use this during the daytime, you get to your destination, your friend's house, a hotel, motel, whatever, take the battery with you, charge it on the inside, bring it back out the next day, you can in theory keep using it day after day after day. So something to think about. Um, just in the case of you're going to charge it up once at home and then take it camping with no way of charging it, I'd say you get about 16, 17 hours of use out of it with the setup we have. Of course, your mileage may vary. I will stop rambling about it. I think it's really nice. I think it's really not only aesthetically pleasing, but very functional, very easy to use. I love the readout. I love I can tell I got 10 hours until it'll run out of power just doing the Starlink. I know that's going to decrease when I plug in the cooler. I can see my watts coming in. And on top of our rooftop tent, we have 480 watts on paper. I know we don't ever get 480 watts out of those panels, but say I got 250 watts out of them today. That combined with the 100 watt panel behind me, I should be able to charge this guy full charge about six hours or so. So that, that covers my needs right there. If I can get some direct sunshine, uh, I can recharge this and go on to day two, and three and four and so forth. So hopefully, Hearing me talk about it, seeing when we're using it, seeing how we're charging it, seeing what we're using it to charge is helpful. I'll put a link below so you can purchase one if you want to. I'm Sean Sewell, the owner and director of Stoke for Ingearment.com. And until next time, take care.